Something I've not been looking forward to, I need to drop the fuel tank to get down all the mud that's trapped down in the front of the fuel tank there. And it also makes sense because this vent pipe is cracking and the breather hose on the other side is a cracked perish as well and this is all kinked. This is all kinked and misaligned so when you're filling it up, it, well you can't fill it up that quickly because it triggers the, the cut off on the fuel pump so it's worth doing it all at the same time. These bad boys, they're not security uh, clamps. They are one-time use, uh, kind of, so you don't over-torque them. So they used to have a nut on here that shears off at the right torque, and then it's done. But to get them off, it's just a case of using, using some pliers to undo this. These bolts will be getting quite stiff at the end of their uh, travel here. You can see that there's rusting, obviously it goes through into a rivnut. And the bit that pokes out the other side is a bit rusty. Don't want to bugger these up. So I've been undoing it as far as it'll go. Coat the threads with uh, thread penetrant as much as possible. Wind it back in. That hopefully would lubricate the inside of the rivnut a bit. Wind it out a bit more, lubricate it again. And wind it in and it's now almost at the end and this is coming out. There we go, all the way out. Yeah, a bit sort of potentially, well, muddy. Muddy at the end there. So when you take these bolts out, it's pretty much loose to hang in the cradle. It's supported at the rear, because it's got studs. I found a rear spring, works very well. This is just between a you know, thick bit of cardboard, a bit of plywood. The next step is to lower it in sections. So I've got a front spring got a bit of wood as it stands the fuel tanks still sort of stuck up there doesn't create of support it that much for the next phase I've got a bit of wood above the cradle under the fuel tank between these two rear springs or the front front spring holding the cradle and I'm going to take that out <laughs> This is the bit where it turns into a massive faff because I need this to drop more to get this out. So this front springs, because the other side's held up by the filler, this front spring's holding the weight. And there is an extremely good reason why I'm bothering to do this. <laughs> I didn't think it'd be as bad as that. That's incredible, you can't even see the plugs or the connectors. So I think I've got a whole lot of clean up time to do. Got the wiring harness off, which was the one that was buried the most and uh, I've exposed the plugs. I think I just need to clean it down because these are the bits where I don't want dirt getting in the fuel tank if possible. So I've got to route that round so it doesn't come off. And there's the vent hose on the opposite side. dropped it down a bit more now, get better access. It's been really difficult to get my hand in there and to get those off at the same time. 
I've been going at this quite a while now. I've had to drop the fuel tank a bit more because I cannot get the fuel pipes off. I just can't get enough squeezing power and leverage and because they're close to each other. Trying to, you need to squeeze both sides of the connector to get it off. But one's obscuring the other and vice versa. It's basically the vent pipe that's holding this up. Oh, this fuel tank is disgusting. Okay, so more access than I remember. So I can now reach in there properly, I think. Get these off. crack on the vent hose at this end as well. It's taken about an hour. Finally got it off. You've just got to get it in the right position where you get that rotated around so you can get the pinch on the on the buttons. And then when you can slide it in and out, pinch and slide it back at the same time. If it's under any kind of tension in any direction then it's not gonna it's not gonna go. There's that little strap up there. Oh, this is snapped off. Oh, it's caught caught behind the bulge here, that's why. Wouldn't slide over. So I'm going to have to get mud out of here and here, maybe the next one along the top there. Got to get the mud out of here and all up here there's mud as well behind the, that's been hidden behind the loom. Uh, clean along the top here and then work my way down, work my way down this side. And because uh, what I found, you know, you work at the you work at the bottom, then when you work at the top, all the mud gets to the bottom dirty again, so... Um, yeah, start at the most logical place. This is going to take a while because all this is full of mud as well. That's probably why when I wash the crossmember out, it keeps it just keeps coming with mud because that is full to about here and there's no drain point for this so it's gonna have to get washed up and out and down through these holes yeah, it's right to the top here let's push the hole of dirt into here now one of the problems with these support braces is that the center is the lowest point but there's no drain hole there you see the drip dripping it kind of dips in the middle but the drain holes are at closer to the camera and further away so there's a whole lot of water in there that drips coming from water leaking out the side so I need to properly drain it I need to 
Jack it up one side of the vehicle. Alright, well this has very much been cleaned out, all the mud, I think now I've got to wipe it down and actually just get the mud off before I can treat this. I've got some built hamper spray to go on. Uh, those at the top, they've taken a bloody long time. That's where the water collects on the inside, so it's taken quite a lot to get ensure I can get the mud out. Stick the wire in there, see if it comes out muddy, basically, all the way down. So there's one, there's four, that one, that one, that one. And the next one after this, this one's quite tricky because you can't spray up from underneath because there's cross members in the way. The next one down from that is the one that's got the seatbelt mounts in it. So the seatbelt mount is blocking the drain hole. And uh, so that one took a lot. There was a lot of mud in the one under there. Yeah, that one there. I'm going to get all bubbly and soapy again. Well, right now it's looking clean. I'm going to have to wait till that dries and see where I've missed. That's my second attempt. Tire inflator's got other good uses as well. I have waxed all this with Built Hammer Dynax, which is quite nice because it's clear effectively. You don't cover up the original paperwork, which is a nice aesthetic, but anyway.